Welcome to Gateway Church Wirral Online. We're so delighted that you're with us this morning. So great that you can be a part of our live streamed gathering. Just to welcome you to this space and what we're all about. Um, to say that we as a church, we're all about seeing people meet with God, encounter him for all his goodness and his grace and for lives to be changed by him. As a church, we want to see a world transformed, made better and better through every life transformed by the grace of God. So our hope and our prayer for you today, meet with Jesus in the things that we're saying, in the things that we're singing, in the way that we're opening up the word of God, which is alive for us today. We want you to know Jesus, know that he loves you, know that he has a plan for your life. And as we're going through our gathering this morning, do please connect with us here in this live stream space. You can fill in our connection card, the tab I think is at the top of your screen. Request prayer if you'd like to. There are great friendly people who would love to pray with you. And do just connect with us in any and every way that you'd love to. As a church, we gather. That's what we're about today. When we come to the close of our gathering, I'll tell you how you can connect with us going forward into the week. So have a really great time. Be blessed. Enjoy yourself and enjoy Jesus we pray. Good evening everybody. Would you like to stand with me this evening? Folks are are gathering as we get going uh, for our time together. Um, It's wonderful to be able to gather on the evening of our our scattered Sundays and we're going to be as we go through the evening sharing stories of what God has been doing and celebrating his goodness and his grace. Um, We run from five till six for the main part of the the evening. Um, Then if families do need to head off, you're welcome to do so. Um, And we're going to move in from six o'clock to a time of extended worshiping God and seeking him together. Um, Just to remind you, I'm sure you're already aware, um, today is Palm Sunday, um, which means Easter's coming. Um, I, I read this week that in the Anglican Church, because they, they have a, a lectionary of different readings, they're in Luke's Gospel uh, this year, and interestingly enough, in Luke's Gospel, he doesn't mention palm branches at all. So I don't know what that makes today. Is it still palm? Well, he has the cloaks, and of course the people lay down their cloaks as Christ Jesus comes in. And I read one guy commenting that in a sense, Jesus is riding in on the backs of his disciples. <laughs> And uh, I rather like that. And I suppose for me, I was thinking, should we welcome the King of glory? Should we welcome the King of glory? And we lift him high and we say, Jesus, we're your humble servants. We love you. We're so glad to be present. We're so glad to lay our all down before you, give you everything that we have to see you glorified. Of course, within Scattered Sunday, our laying down is, is, our, is our giving of our time, giving of our energy, of going together in our transformed communities to share Jesus. I was reminded of these verses from 2 Corinthians 9. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. In that context there, Paul was talking to the Corinthians about their generosity in giving. Uh, These principles, I I think we can apply it to our, our giving in mission and the way that we give ourselves, we give our time, our energy, our very, very best. And I wonder as we thank God for his goodness and his grace today, can we just believe in him and trust in him that he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing. Every time we give, every time we share, every time we go, God gives more. You can't outgive God. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. And I wonder, for everything that we've given today, everywhere we've gone, everybody we've spoken to, every joy that we've had, let's commit these things to God in prayer now. And let's trust, um, and trust faithfully, trust radically, that we might give, perhaps give even more than we think that we have, so that Christ Jesus might enrich us to give yet more, so that he, who is the Lord of the harvest, might have his way. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for the mission that is ours through your commissioning of us. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you that you send us 
And when you send us, you equip us. I thank you, God, that you give us uh, incredible call upon our life, incredible tasks to accomplish. And if you do that, you promise that you will give us everything we need. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each and every person of our church who is determined to give themselves in mission. Lord God, I pray that you would bless, enrich, and make fruitful everything that has been given today. And Lord Jesus, yet more than that, I pray that Lord God Almighty, you might give us yet more of your grace and gospel opportunity that we might give more in our world. Lord Jesus Christ, encourage us, enthuse us, empower us in mission. We lay our lives down before you. Amen. Let's worship God together.
Welcome to Gateway Church World. If you'd like to just say welcome, hello to somebody here. If you're watching on, online, just put on the chat. Say that you're here and that you are happy to be part of this gathering. And what we'll do is we'll hear from Pastor Nick or somebody from his community to share about what God has done today. Brilliant. It's really a blessing to see you all here, whether you're in the building or online, it is an encouragement to be part of God's family because we have God as our father. And we have every one of you, every one of you, every one of you as part of that great family. So um, today is a great day because we had a wonderful sunny day. Hopefully you enjoyed the sunny day. So you could put a smile across your face and reflect that enjoyment. Anyway, um, we will have an opportunity to hear from a, a person from the Transform community. And what we do on a Scabbard Sunday is we go out to where we are at the moment in our neighborhood or in our community to serve the people that God is putting in our hearts to show them God's love in the hope that they too will embrace and enjoy what great grace and love we have our, received from God ourselves. So without further ado, is it Pastor Nick or is it Harry? Both of you? Or <laughs> is Harry? Let's welcome Harry as he comes up on the stage. And what we do with this storytelling of what has happened is to encourage one and, oh, each one of us of the things God has allowed us to do, not because of we are great, but although we are, but because of what God is doing in our lives. And through this opportunity we have, in our Scatter Sunday activity. So, Harry, yeah. over to you. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, I'm from uh, the Rock Ferry Tramia um, community group. Um, we were out in um, Victoria Park today uh, doing our, um, our outreach. Um, we don't usually do that. We usually um, go to a local uh, cafe where the people we've kind of brought through the uh, the Alpha Group last year, we kind of meet up there and they um, bring other people and it's, it's really good. It's a chance for us also to kind of witness to the, um, to the cafe owners uh, because it's a, like a presence there, um, like uh, regularly. But this week, um, <clears throat> we decided to do different. Uh, we, we have done it a few times in the past, but um, we, we haven't done it for quite a while since before COVID. <clears throat> so we decided to kind of meet people uh, face to face and um, offer to talk, to uh, pray with them, to kind of listen to, you know, what they had to say sort of thing. And um, I, I think we're, we're going to be putting in a tab to um, Pastor Greg for price of a dog, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. Um, <laughs> It's um, yesterday, I think, was it yesterday or the day before, um, Nick and uh, a couple of other members went around the kind of local area around Victoria Park where we would be, kind of just dropped leaflets through letterboxes and stuff like that. So uh, we, we were hoping for a mass turnout, but sadly, no. Um, we, uh, we got there and it was a nice day. Um, and... Um, Nick strategically placed us 
where there's like four or five pathways um, kind of connect. So there was no getting away from it, really. Um, and uh, there, we, there we stood, and we handed out leaflets to, um, to passing um, fortunate victims who were trying to get hold of their dogs, like, but, you know, uh, and trying to talk to them and pray. We'd have, we did have a few uh, great conversations. I know um, Nick spoke to a fella from Greece, was it? Where a lad from, from Greece, and uh, he was quite uh, open, receptive, and shared a lot of, um, uh, of his experience with Nick. Um, we also met a woman, uh, again, with a dog, um, and she was, um, she'd actually come to the park as a response to one of the leaflets that was, um, that was kind of handed out, so that, that, was, um, that was good. Uh, and she spoke to Nick about, because um, I, I wasn't in that conversation, but um, the gist of it is that she was um, quite happy to, to help um, in some capacity, but um, she was also um, an ex-police woman. Um, and that. So we did have quite a few a good conversations. We passed out a lot, a lot of leaflets, stroked quite a few dogs, um, offered free coffee and biscuits, um, uh, sadly, we ended up taking a lot of them home, <clears throat> which, um, you know, Nick is resisting the urge to eat them. Um, and, um, yeah, um, it was something that we didn't know, we haven't normally, don't normally do, I have to say, we usually meet in the, in the cafe, but um, it was a chance to get out and kind of meet and greet people and exercise that um, evangelical muscle that uh, we, we all should have <laughs> to some degree. Um, and that, and... Um, I think what we've learned today is the fact that um, we do need we do need to be seen um, to be out there. We do have to let people know that there is a church, there is a God. He's interested in you know um, their lives. He's interested in you know bringing people to Him and um, and and really changing their lives. And um, uh, it's uh, probably an ongoing goal, really, to kind of improve how we interact with people but um yeah it was really good and uh hopefully we'll um, we'll be doing it again in the future thank you thank you very much harry as i call on the team to, for us to continue with the worship um let me invite you to stand with me as we say a word of prayer it's great that uh, harry shared about going out there where the people are and having that conversation um, sometimes we can get comfortable and think that God will just do his thing. When in fact, God is encouraging us to actually be the one to go out to these people. So with those thoughts in mind, let's pray. Lord God, we are reminded of your command for us to go and make disciples. Forgive us, Lord God, if we sometimes go into a situation we lull ourselves to a comfortable state and not actually do that work. We may feel sometimes inadequate or lacking confidence. But Lord God, you have filled us with everything that we need. All of heaven's blessings you have poured into our lives through your son, Jesus Christ. And we get to do these things, not on our own, not by ourselves, but through you and through the indwelling power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you will lead us to people and be guided in our conversations with them so that we may share your love in ways that will change them because your words will flow through your people. Thank you, Lord God, for what you'll do. We give you praise. Amen. Let's continue to praise God.
your hands with me. Let's do it. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh Lord. Lifted up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you and we exalt you tonight, Lord. Lord Jesus, we put you in your rightful place as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, for you alone are worthy of our praise. All honor and glory belongs to you. Lord, we lift up our hands, we lift our, our voices to you, Lord, and we just proclaim your greatness in this place. We thank you, Lord that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt you. Amen. Isn't it good to be able to worship in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. To exalt him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's worthy. He is worthy. I was laughing before Pastor Greg was saying that the palm branches weren't me mentioned in Luke. And actually from our Moravian reading tonight, we're actually from Luke, Luke 19. So we're not going to be mentioning the palm branches. We might mention the, the cloaks going down, but there's more important things that sometimes we sometimes overlook within that scripture that we're going to look at tonight about praise and worshipping our Lord Jesus. If we turn to Luke 19, verses 28 to 40, the scripture says, after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the, on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke them. Rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This evening, I want us to focus on that final verse. If, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. We've all got a voice, yes? We like to use our voices. We like to talk. How good is it to praise our Lord? How good is it to shout out joy to the Lord? You see, if we're not, going to, if we're not willing to shout out, 
And then God said, Jesus said, the stones will cry out. Now, can you imagine it? It would be an amazing thing to see. But of course, it's better, isn't it, coming from us. Today, we've had the opportunity, haven't we, of sharing our love of Jesus to other people. Through scattered our, our communities, we've been able to share with other people and have those opportunities to do that. But we're not giving We're not doing our job, are we, if we're not giving God his rightful praise, if we're not acknowledging him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, if we're not acknowledging who he is. You see, in our passage today, what I want to do is just draw out three things quickly on there, is that God is worthy of loud and joyful praise. That's two of you. Shall we say that again? Okay. God is worthy of loud and joyful praise. Amen. Fantastic. Our praise should focus on the person and the work of Jesus. And God must and will be praised through Jesus. Are we willing to praise Jesus tonight? Are we willing to set the example? Are we willing to shine for Jesus through our praise? God is worthy of loud and joyful praise. In verse 37, it says, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Are you joyful? Have we got a smile on our faces? Yes, because when we know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, those smiles should be there permanently, even in the tough times when we can be miserable and we might need a bit of a kick up the bum, okay? We need to be able to identify and praise God. Praise him for he is worthy of our praise. The miracles that they had seen, they were joyfully acknowledging who Jesus was. You see, it's Passover week. It's Palm Sunday. Jesus comes on the donkey and is headed into Jerusalem. The crowds have gathered. The atmosphere is electric. Can you imagine yourself being there? Now, at the moment, there's 70,000 people cheering a couple of football teams. There's a match going on. But how much more should we be praising God? How much more should we be acknowledging him as the king of of kings. You see, the crowds came, the emotions are turned up high. Jesus was coming. Jesus was riding on the donkey. And they all turned to him. In loud voices, they acknowledged who he was. You see, God was created for all things, for his glory. He created everything for his glory, no matter what it is. Revelation 4, 11 says, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive the glory, honor and power. Hallelujah. How exciting is that? God is the creator of everything. All things were created by him and for him. And nothing, there is nothing, absolutely nothing without him. And we need to acknowledge that tonight. We need to realize who he is. By God's will, all things were created and have been created for him. Therefore, God is worthy of all glory and honor and praise. God created all things for his glory. So we should be joyful We should be happy in our praise. We should be happy in our workplaces come tomorrow morning on a Monday morning. A smile on our faces. We should be happy, full of the joy of the Lord in the people that we meet. That they see a difference within us. That they want what we have. That that smile becomes contagious. See, our greatest joy is found in praising him. In Psalm 100, 1 to 3, it says, we read that, shout for joy to the Lord of the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Shout for joy to the Lord. If anything today, I'm going to get you excited. Yes? 
We're going to get you joyful, full of joy, that tonight we can go out of here singing and praising God, thankful for all the things that he has done for us, thankful for all the things that he has blessed us with. The people were cheering him on. They might not have known what they were cheering for to begin with, but we do. We know what Jesus has done for us. We know that we have been set free. You see, Jonathan Edwards puts it this way, the happiness of the, of the creature consists in rejoicing in God, by which also God is magnified and, and exalted. In other words, God's praise and our joy go together. He gives us that joy And you will never be truly happy until you're giving God his rightful praise. Are you ready to exalt him and praise him tonight? Are you ready to get excited to see what God has in store for you? God wants to have that relationship with you. God wants, on this Palm Sunday, as we we reflect on what is going to happen this week, he wants us to acknowledge and to praise him. Our greatest joy is found in praising Jesus. Our greatest joy is found there. Our praise should focus on Jesus. We can be thankful. We can be thankful for what he has given us. But are we focused on him? Do we give him all the praise and the glory? Or does our eye wander off to something else? Are we thinking about something else that is going on? Or other things that are in our life? We praise our kids when they do well, don't we? Yes, hopefully, when they come in from school with different things. We praise them for what we're doing. How much more shall we praise God for the freedom that he has given us? How much more should we praise him for what he has provided for us? Because Jesus is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Psalm 118 says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It. We should have chosen that song, maybe. It's, an old, it's a golden oldie, but it's good, isn't it? This is the day the Lord has made. We are thankful for what he has given us. And in there it says, you know, O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. And as we see in, in Luke, it says save us. You know, the Hebrew word there is hosanna. Hosanna, Lord, save us. As they're crying out hosanna, they're crying out to Jesus Lord save us set us free this is what the people were crying out on Palm Sunday are you ready to walk hand in hand are you ready to exalt him to proclaim his greatness in this place are you ready to proclaim the greatness on the on the streets of Birkenhead and on the Wirral are you ready to proclaim how wonderful he is this week as we go into the week and knowing what is to come. You see, in Luke 19, 30, 38, he says, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Peace in heaven. God will give you peace. God will give us all things as we seek his face. You know, the people might not have realized the significance of what they were saying, but God knew that Jesus' entry into Jerusalem would result in him dying on the cross for sin. And Jesus' sacrificial sin would, death, sorry, would bring peace in heaven and peace on earth. And for every one of us that puts our faith in him, that Jesus brings us that peace. See, God must be, must and will be praised through Jesus Christ. Verse 39 and 40, it says there on there, You know, the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. It's time for us to speak up. It's time for us to have that voice to praise Jesus for who he is. And the thing is that Jesus didn't rebuke his disciples. He was really encouraging them to continue 
to praise. He was encouraging them to continue to praise who he is and what he was going to do. Jesus is clear that he affirms the people. He affirms their praise. He affirms what they are doing. God is going to be praised one way or another. My challenge to you tonight is how are you praising God? How are you praising God? How are you showing it to other people? In John 17, Jesus prays, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing in the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. began. This is what Jesus says to God before he goes to the cross, that he may be glorified, but also that others may have no eternal life. We need to understand why Jesus died on the cross for us to give us eternal life that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So what does it mean exactly to praise? Is that God is worthy of loud and joyful praise. He created all things for his glory and our greatest joy is found in praising him. Are we going to get excited tonight? As we continue in praise and worship, as we acknowledge, as we come around the table in a few minutes' time, to acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross to take away our sin. We can do it by praising him and thanking him, being thankful for what he has given us. We focus on Jesus. The Bible says, do not look to the left or to the right, but to keep our eyes fixed. Are your eyes fixed on your Savior tonight? Or are they distracted? Have you got the blinkers on that you focus on him and him alone? Let us just focus on him. Spend time in his presence for what he's doing. And, and we will praise him in all things. That at the name of Jesus, I've said this before, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. What is coming from your lips? What is coming from your lips? Are you exalting or are you pulling down? It's important that we exalt. We're living in a community, aren't we? We're in a, live in a world where it's negative, negative, negative. I have to be honest, I hardly watch the news. I maybe watch it. Whatever comes on my phone, I'll, I'll flick on there. And then I can pray into what is happening on there. Because otherwise, we can find ourselves being pulled down. Where God wants us to exalt. Exalt him to encourage those around us. Who have you encouraged today? Have you encouraged anybody? Have you sent them a text? Have you phoned somebody up? My Sunday mornings consist of a FaceTime at 8 o'clock in the morning with my niece. And it's always interesting. It puts a smile on my face. We succeeded today of 20 minutes. Normally, it's a blank camera. She disappears. But she was smiling. She was giggling. She was laughing away. And it's so good to have, to have that encouragement. But I know that Jesus gives me more encouragement that Jesus provides more for me. Family are important and Jesus provides for us and puts them in our lives that we can be, have friends and we can have family. But most of all, Jesus has to be at the center of everything that we do, in everything that we do. So are you ready to exalt him? Are you ready to praise him as we enter into this week, as we, before Easter, as it's Palm Sunday? Should we stand? We're going to come around the table in a couple of minutes. But as I said, remember, if we don't praise him, the stones will cry out. God has called us to praise him, to know and to acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross. He was sent so that our sins could be forgiven because he loves every single one of us tonight. No matter who we are, no matter what our circumstances are, Jesus loves you. And he wants us to acknowledge him as our saviour as well. So we're going to come around the table as we do. Let's just spend a few minutes just reflecting and thanking Jesus for what he has done. And then when you feel free, please come forward, take the bread, take the wine and be thankful for what Jesus has done. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are willing to die on the cross, Lord, that our sins may be forgiven, that we may be set free, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we put you in your rightful place today as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We acknowledge you and we thank you for all that you have done, that you've set your children free. Hallelujah. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now no longer I about Christ in me. I will run to the cross where you open up my eyes I will sing of the love that saved me I will bow in the place where your death became my life I will run I will run to the cross oh how endless the hope oh how joy of the soul rolled away. It is step by grace. I am raised to life. Now no longer I but Christ in me. I will run to the cross where you open up my eyes. I will see
It is no longer I, it is Christ who lives in me. Christ who lives in me. Christ, and one more time, declare it. It is no longer I, it is Christ who lives in me. Christ who lives in me. Christ who lives in me. Praise your name, Lord. You live in us, Lord. Hope of glory. Praise your name. We praise your name. You are worthy. You are worthy. Thank you, Lord. this part of the evening's gathering. Let me just pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have come to save us. When we called out, Hosanna, Lord, save us. You heard our cries. And you saved us from the works of the evil one, from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin. You have set us free. And we can call out to you, Abba, Father. And we can call out to you, Jesus, our Lord. Because of what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. May our lives be a praise to your name. Amen. Amen. As we continue this evening, you're invited to stay around and join us for an extended time of praise and worship. As Pastor Carson encourages us to do. But if you need to shoot off. Feel free to do so with God's blessing. But we'll continue on praising God and respond to His word, to His word, with joyful praise unto His name. God bless you. If you're sticking around, join us as we praise Him.
that for a moment. Just think about that for a moment. Just close your eyes for a while. He turned our mourning, our crying, our sobbing. He turned our mourning into dancing. Think about that. He gave beauty for our ashes. When we're sorrowful, He gave beauty. He turned our shame into glory. Only God can do that. I said, only God can do that. I said, only God can do that. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Thank you, Lord.
in your life I will build and I will build my life upon your name it is a you in his word, a firm foundation. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship God, I feel this urging in my spirit. If you are able, just grab somebody by the hand and declare God's blessing upon their lives, into their lives. Whatever it is that God has placed in your lips to declare blessing. Declare it to the person you are with right now. Let the blessings of God flow through you as you speak out God's word into the lives of somebody. Come on, grab somebody by the hand. Declare God's blessing. Declare God's blessing. You, you don't have to ask them what they need. God knows. But declare God's blessing over their lives. Praise be to God. be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for the riches of heaven's blessings that you have already declared into our lives. Thank you, Lord. We receive it in your name. We receive it in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the giver of good gifts. You are the giver of great gifts. Lord God, more than the gifts, Lord God, we want the giver Praise be to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to your name. Once you're done praising God, uh, blessing somebody, let's finish off with this word, this chorus of praise. Stand with me as we declare this. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our As a congregation, a family, let's sing it again. Sing and declare this again, oh praise the name. Oh praise the
blessings, honor, glory, and power belong to you. To the name above all names, the King of our hearts, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Go in the graces and the blessings of our Lord God Almighty. Once again, it's been such a delight to be able to share together as a church this morning. And uh, we know uh, that taking what God has been doing in our lives, we can go and have wonderful weeks with him. Just to um, invite you um, to journey together with one another as we go through the week. We as a church, we don't just gather, but we get going into what God has for us together. And we have these things called transform communities. We would love to help you to connect with other like-minded people who are exploring God's goodness and grace and seeing how they can be a part of his transforming work in the world. So again, hit us up, get in touch. We'd love to help you to connect. Anything that you need, any prayer requests, do let us know. And we'll love to see you again this time next week. God bless you and bye for now.